Hello and welcome to Art Expression for Stress Relief and Self-Reflection. My name is Kimberly Griffiths and I'm a counselor and art therapist in Colorado Springs and I'm so glad you're here with me today. I hope that you will enjoy our time being creative together. The project we're going to work on today is called Treasure Box Collages and this is designed to help you release tension, relax and have some fun. It's easy to do and should only take about an hour to an hour and a half, sometimes a little longer depending on, on how detailed you want to get. But first, before we get started into our project, I'd like to take you through a short relaxation exercise which will help bring you to a place of calmness and to bring you fully present in the moment. So please find a comfortable place to sit, either on a chair, or on the couch. You can even lay down and relax if that's more comfortable for you. But make sure that your hands are not crossed and that your legs aren't crossed either and that your back is nice and straight. So please close your eyes and just notice your breathing. Notice breathing as fully as you possibly can into your lungs. And then as you release your breath, release completely and fully as well. Sometimes it's good to count going in and out. So we'll start with the count of four. So we're breathing in, two, three, four. Breathing out, two, three, four. And let's do that just a couple more times. Breathing fully in and exhaling fully. One more, breathing fully in, filling your lungs all the way into your belly, and relaxing as you breathe out. Good. Now with your eyes closed, I'd like you to bring your attention to the bottom of your feet. Just notice your feet, either in your shoes or on the floor, and bring your attention to the very bottom you might feel a little tingle there and just imagine that there's a nice little warm ball of light at the bottom of both of your feet. This little ball is moving up your feet into your ankles, moving up through your shins and your calves to your knees, bringing light up through your upper legs into your sits bones, into your hips and your lower back. And the two balls of light combine into one now, right at your belly button. Now bring that ball of light up further, filling your entire torso, moving past your heart, into your shoulders and your chest, and filling your entire chest and your upper back with light. Imagine now that the ball divides into two, moving into both shoulders and down your arms, lighting up your elbows, your forearms, your wrists, and moving into your hands and your fingers. You might feel a little tingling going on here too. That's good. Now bring the balls of light back together again up your arms to your throat and move from your throat up to the space between your eyes inside your head and fill your entire head with light. You might imagine this too as a warm liquid feeling, which now has filled your entire body from your toes all the way up to the top of your head. 
Now bring your attention back to a spot that I call your center that lives between your heart and your belly button. And just bring your attention there. As you just quickly scan through your body, if there's anywhere else that you feel tension or tightness, use your breath to open a space there, relaxing fully. Now that you're connected to your heart center, see if there is anything that might be living in your body that has something to do with tension or perhaps an experience that you've had over the last few days or week and breathe into that and release it and let it go. Let everything that you might have carried with you into this moment just melt away and release and fully let go. Now come back to your breath, breathing naturally and notice where you are, either sitting in a chair on the couch or laying on the floor. Notice that you are back in your body, back in your space. Feel your fingers and your toes fully present again. And with a nice full breath, gently open your eyes and come back into the room. Good, welcome. Okay. So this project is one of my favorites. I love making little boxes. And we have the opportunity to actually create something that will literally store something of value to you. That's why I call it a treasure box. So here's a little example of one that I decorated to have the feeling of pleasure, fun, a little bit of travel elements to it. I've got some cut out map paper, some flowers. And inside, I put special little cards that have meaning for me. So all of the box examples I'm going to show you could potentially have a different purpose. This is a little box I made using tissue paper to create some texture and some varieties of color tones. This is a little box that a friend of mine made and it's specifically to keep dog treats for her favorite pet. This is a little box I've made too that I actually use to hold business cards. These boxes can all be found at Places like Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I haven't found these at dollar stores, but they might be in this smaller size. This is just a paper mache box. And the prices for these run for anything from $1.50 up to maybe 4 or $5 for a larger size. So whatever size and shape or form you decide to use today, that's perfect for you. So what we're going to do is actually use a, a variety of materials. You can use tissue paper, as I mentioned, which we're going to do today. But you can also use acrylic paint, watercolor paint. You can use different kinds of papers that you might have collected along. You could use an old letter. It could be uh, leftover Christmas paper wrapping or birthday, birthday present wrapping. Anything like that that you have around is perfectly acceptable to use. So today I think I'm going to use this little heart. It just feels like a fun shape to use. And I'm going to start out with using some tissue paper. And again, you can find a variety of different colors at the dollar store, a dollar a packet or even places like King Supers, Safeway, they might have a variety pack of colors. And we're just gonna glue it right onto our box. What I use quite often is Mod Podge, which you again can find at almost art, any art supply store, or you can make your own Mod Podge with just plain white glue. 
And what I do is I put some into a little plastic container so that I can use it over and over again without it drying out. And I use a brush that I don't normally use for painting because the paint or the glue can actually impact the quality of the brush. So I just use this for my gluing projects. So for now, I'm going to start out with probably just doing the lid first. Again, there really isn't any perfect way to do this. And I'm just using different pieces and sizes of the paper that I'll basically just be gluing right on top. I also like to keep some paper towels handy. This glue can get all over the place. And it's a good place to put my brush down when I'm not using it. And I'm just gluing the paper right onto the surface of the box. So I'm using blue today because I think what I'm going to create for my box is to keep thoughts or feelings that might be a little bit uncomfortable in my heart. I'm going to store this in, in this, them in here. And I'll explain more about that in a minute. And blue just has a tendency to feel like sadness for me today. Not that I feel sad, but it's a good place to put sadness. You might create a box that holds special memories that could be, if you like to visit the ocean or the beach, you might create a special place to put shells or maybe some sand. If you like to collect stones, you could put a variety of little stones in here. The purpose is really just to create a special place to contain something special for you. I'm going to use a variety of different colors and just make this box really interesting in terms of texture. The thing I like about using tissue paper is that I can layer it easily and with the glue I can turn down the edges and still make it relatively smooth. It's pretty thin. So it makes layering really easy. Okay. It's easy to actually wrap around the edges as well. You can also, when you're, if you're using paint, of course, that's super easy. Just want to make sure that it's nice and dry before you actually put the lid back down on the other part of the box. I'm going to start working on the inside. And I think I might use some purple. So various colors will have different meanings for everyone. It's a little bit more challenging to get inside a small box, but that's okay. We'll get there. Mod Podge or just white Elmer's glue or even just a generic version of the glue is super easy to clean up on your hands or if you happen to get it on your clothes it'll just wash right out.
The goal here is not to make anything perfectly. It's just to relax and to have fun with color. So I'll add a little bit of some brightness in there. keep going on that in a minute. I think I'll do maybe some of this navy blue on the inside of the lid. So what I'm doing is I'm truly just being spontaneous in my choices of color. I'm just going to go with what feels right. piece here. Again with the tissue paper it's super easy to get this into the little tough corners. If I were using a thicker paper it might be a little harder. to be sparing with the glue. Of course it needs to be stick, sticking. Okay. Anyway, you get the idea. Okay. So ultimately I would be working on this entire box. Again, that should take about 45 minutes or so to finish this size. And then if I wanted to, I might decide to pull out some markers, maybe draw a texture, another design perhaps. And then what I will end up putting in here will be creating some messages to myself perhaps that have to do with relaxation. I might write a poem. I might actually uh, take a little piece of plain paper and write down something that was wonderful that happened to me today and fold this up and put it in my box so that when I do have a tough day, I actually can open this back up and just read all the wonderful things that have happened. So it can also be a source of gratitude, connecting to things that make me happy. So it doesn't have to hold sadness, it can hold happy too. But what I really think is fun is being as whimsical and creative as you can with these. Again, there's no right way to do this, it's just whatever feels right to you. I also sometimes will put on little sayings that have meaning for me. This one says, collect beautiful moments. This says, tell your stories, own everything that has happened to you, don't leave anything out. It's all good stuff. So with that, I hope you thoroughly enjoy this process as much as I do. I love this project. I hope you have fun with it, and I'll look forward to seeing you again.
Okay, now that you've had a chance to complete your treasure box collage, I'd like you to reflect on the following question. What will your treasure box contain and why? So please take some time to think about that and write down your answer as thoroughly as possible. Thank you to Bemis School of Art and the Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center at Colorado College for allowing us to spend time together today. Thanks so much and we'll see you again. Thank you.